to Grand National Championships on the internet. My name is Alistair. With me tonight, Corin Atchison. Hi. Jotham Fady. Hello. And Jared McLeod. Hi. Hope everyone's doing splendidly tonight and every day of the week. If you'd like to contact us, our email address is us, us at the gncshow.com. Follow us on Twitter and other social media sites at the GNC show. You can visit the GNC show.com for all other bits of show related information. And if you want to leave a voicemail message for us or possibly talk to us on the phone, give a call 727-379-4335 or paper wheel on your alpha numeric keypad. So Jotham, can we talk to you first about uh, what you've been up to this past week? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I think I think my biggest news is I think I I well I did I found a secret pickleball society. Okay. <laughs> are you sure, it's, Jared? Are you sure it's secret? Yes. Well, I'll, I'll get I'll get to that. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Um, so Jared and I went and played pickleball at HCC. Um, they have some new courts. They're really nice. And so, um, you know, it's funny, I tried to join the pickleball team at HCC like the day before, right? I went there for the first time last Thursday and I asked the front desk girl when I was leaving, I was like, hey, uh, is there a team? Is there like a club? I'm a student. She's like, no, it doesn't exist. I'm like, all right, go back the next day. And she's like, well, you can only play for X number. You can only play for like an hour because at 6 p.m. there's an event. And my, my, my ears, you know, like, hey, uh. So tell me about this event. How do people find out about this event? Oh, they call. So you're telling me all these people that are about to show up just randomly called you and you found out? You're really putting the full court press out. on this poor person who's just working. I don't like her. I don't like her. Jared, can you back me up here? I can back him up. Uh, she's pretty useless. And uh, everybody kind of everybody had the same opinion. Yeah, I, I, who's like everybody? Into, strangers that we were talking well, to about pickleball was like, oh yeah, front desk girl. That front desk girl really sucks. <laughs> Jesus, the pickleball wow. community can't be her. that big. I mean, I'm sure about half of them listen to this show, and one of them she, <laughs> she over she overcharged one of the people too. Like the girl was yeah, like, yeah, she overcharged someone um, <laughs> that was like a, a pickleball person who was there to like hang out with the guy who put the event on. So she would have gotten into the show for free if it was a, like a, a music show. And then she like overcharged her uh, do you that think, night for the event. Do you think she's skimming off the top? You think this is racketeering? She, she might uh, be. I get it. Oh, no, you don't. Good. There was nothing to get. Foul. <laughs> but that was funny. Thank you. Anyways, so, all right. So, so Jotham went deep so, cover, went, went, went deep cover into the pickleball society and, and made some friends. So, yeah, you, did, did you Jared go to and this I were event? Hit, well, we were there until, so we got there at five. The event was at six. Yeah. And at around 5 30, these guys show up and they start, you know, warming up. And I'm thinking, I wonder how, how good can these guys be? Blah, 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 you know. And I see one guy doing these warm ups around the court, like just these calisthenic warm ups. And I was like, oh, this is serious. I don't know what he's doing, but it looks serious. And these guys were very elite. Yeah. They were like, like, like semi pro, like they're like six and a half feet tall and built like spider monkeys. Like, I mean, just like all arms and legs. Like they can just re I mean, the reach on these guys was like incredible. It was very impressive. I apologize to Jared later for like sneaking glances over at those guys. Paying a lot of attention to them. <laughs> can you imagine if I was, was playing so them? That would be amazing to play those. They people. were very good. I'd and never seen anyone that good. They play hard. They play fast. Uh, Just the way I like it. Yeah, it's. Uh, but Jotham got discouraged. He's like, I thought it was good. He's like, and then I see these guys, and like now I'm all. 
question. So, my well, whole okay. So, so Jared and I play for an hour, and and all these people show up for this event. It's a round robin event. And they're mostly middle age to 60-ish. I don't know. There were a few people in their 30s, maybe. Right, Jared? No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they were all very inclusive. Like, hey, do you want to play tonight? Why don't you play right now? And uh, they were very nice. So then I, I headed well, over to Are you sure that the... these people weren't bullying you? It sounds like maybe you just misunderstood their tone. They were like, why don't you play tomorrow? Why don't you play right now? Were they pushing their chest against you? I, I was I was so preoccupied with that court of guys, they could have been. I don't know. It happened so fast. They, they were asking us like our skill level, because what are the skill levels? There's like... Uh, I don't know, intermediate, uh, like advanced, advanced beginner, or whatever. Like that. Cooking. Yeah, like they rank. So there's a five point ranking. In? There's a five point ranking system for ranked players. Yeah. So, um, so af after we talked to a few people, said no, no, thank you. We have a big game of D and D later, because um, this was Friday night. Because this was I, Friday I, night. <laughs> <laughs> I strolled over and just kind of watched. I was watching the the people, uh, the very good guys play, and uh, so like this lady walked by and, and I introduced myself to her and, and I found out where she plays, which is 15 minutes north of us. And she's like, "Hey, do you have Team Builder? It's this app." I was like, no, I don't have this app. Well, you should get it. You have to have a special code. I can give you the code, and then you get invited to the pickleball events. Infiltration. Yeah. Infiltration. Full infiltration. I haven't it gone sounds, yet. Got sounds more like invitation, but it's fine. <laughs> no. I was deep cover, guys. Give it <laughs> sure. Me. Yeah, yeah. I really they went would, out if, there, if, and if I was really putting myself asked, out there. <laughs> if we just walked up and asked, they wouldn't have given it to us. But you did walk up and ask. No, no, no. He, he, I, he taught, he, I was, he I was casually it. like yeah. leaning against a pole. <laughs> you know, I, the, the, the ladies, on. the ladies' like, friend yeah, yeah. showed up. I was like, "Hey, so like, how you know how good are you? <laughs> how we'll good let her are you? you in? Why don't you play he right now?" He was a now? four something. He said he would get a few points on the very elite guys, and I was like, "Oh, this guy's way better than I am. <laughs> They're all better than I am." But I'm going to go. I'm going to make more friends. And I'm part of a secret society now. So. <laughs> Not for Great long. Week. That's pretty also, sweet. <laughs> also, in pickleball news, I got a pair of tennis shoes in the mail today. Wide. Wide, uh, they, wide um, bottom. They are, they are it's a very hard toe. I mean, you can't. You knock on It's like might as well be steel toed. Um, you know, because your, your toe is jamming into your shoe. Did you lot. accidentally buy shot put shoes? <laughs> <laughs> I bought like really sporty Doc Martens for the courts. Nice. <laughs> Cute. They got um, that grip. So yeah, so I'm excited to try those out. And you need something that's, that's gonna got, that's gonna support your side to side motion. You don't want to roll an ankle. You don't want a running shoe. You want something with a, a nice wide base. Good trainer. Yes. Would you, you say might like a be a size mantis? too big because online ordering is, is difficult, but uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited for you. Yeah. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Jotham smoked me uh, in every game that we played. Um, yeah. I hear he's not as good as those other guys, though, so don't feel Definitely bad. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me back on to Earth, guys. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I was about to float away. Yeah, but he's going to start uh, exceeding or, uh, you know, progressing exponentially in his uh in his abilities now that he's infiltrated the secret society he's going to start uh sparring with those klitschko brothers and he, like he's going to be I might go pro, about. guys i might go pro yes i'm in my mid-30s yes i've never played this sport before in my life but is it too late i don't know you know but you've got the passion what ladder are you in <laughs> two i made that up uh jared what have you been up to I know it, do uh, it dovetails pickleball stories. Yes, <laughs> pickleball stories. Uh, got smoked by Jotham. That is hard. It's hard to play, especially for like a potato guy like me. That's like all like nubs because you got to cover a lot of area quickly. Have you thought and about I using like a rolling tumbling approach? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so I have to get I have to get a lot better with my like explosive movement. Like, you know, because I can't your speed I, I out of reach. the block. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you gotta yeah, have those be, long limbs. You'd be a force to be reckoned with at the net. <laughs> it's true. When you, can, the wall. when you can cut off an angle <laughs> like that, the closer you get, the less ground you have to cover. But, yeah. you know, that pickleball's coming at you. <laughs> back, 
but it's it is a wiffle ball right like so it's not that <laughs> yes. bad right <laughs> it is a wiffle ball. yes fine. it is it's not that bad it's not like getting hit with a racquetball i don't know if anyone's no, done yeah. that before but that is intense when i was a nice welt in middle school i got uh hit really hard in the eye with a handball which is yeah. kind of like a Same little smaller thing. than a rock a yeah. racquetball oh yeah yeah and uh that that uh, hurt me really bad it took a uh, took a little while to uh, recover you still have that. your eyes though yeah it wasn't it wasn't um what are you complaining pro- about profound <laughs> yeah uh, you know what <laughs> I, I bounced back i was one of the lucky ones i apologize for even bringing it up <laughs> Um, other than that, uh, Sunday went on another long bike ride slash meal slash return bike ride out to Ted Peters, uh, rode through downtown St. Petersburg, saw the pier for the first time, the new pier area. Hadn't seen it before. Beautiful. Um, had some good smoked fish. Is it done done? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, it's like, I didn't know it was done done either, but, uh, I rode down there with Mr. John Niles. We had a nice few hours. Uh, and hoping to plan on this, like being a regular thing. It's fun. Good long it's bike fun. ride. I mentioned, uh, Ted Peters to my, uh, partner in all things, Mandy Miner. And she said, Ugh, the only thing I hate more what? than smoked food is fish. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> wow. smoked fish is, that's the whole reason they're there. Yeah. Like, what's Smoke your deal, them. Mandy? Get smoked like Jared. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> smoked like uh, like Jotham on the court. You're talking about pickleball yeah, style. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. We smoked could do some Jared. smoke fish at halftime on the pickleball court. Just I feel like this is your in to this community. Here is your your affinity for uh, food and and I snacks. will show up with smoked fish. You're gonna show me <laughs> yeah, crispy. I've never been to crispy <laughs> eggs yeah. in in both hands. Crispy <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Crispy eggs, just dish them smoked out. fish, and uh, some M&Ms. You know? hitting, them, hitting them with the, with the, with the pickleball paddle. <laughs> Tapping them to people. <laughs> Ooh, I just remembered. Can I, can I go back to me, something I did this week? Please do. I did a 10-mile hike in the Ocala National Forest. Oh, yeah. You see a lot of uh, variation in uh, uh, elevation. elevation there? About 300 feet. So oh. not much. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a lot for Florida. No, it's um, yeah, ten, ten, 10 miles through uh, the sand. Hiking is weird because it's um, it's not hard, but it's just a constant, you know, for hours at a time. So hold on now, it like, fucks you up in a weird way. <laughs> okay, hiking. <laughs> you broke down for us. It's like a consistent, like long thing, and you say it fucks you up in mm-hmm. a weird way, just making you tired and yeah. such. It's not like it's not like. Uh, you know, doing like a leg day at the gym. Well, it's like a repetitive or stress like thing. It's like it's hurting just a, yeah. uh, the 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 slow and steady burn. It's like hurting yourself at work by using the mouse wrong. You know, o- yes, over the course of ten hours. ten thousand repetitions. Yeah, I mean, unless you're in the Pacific Northwest and you're mount, you're like hiking up a mountain. Then it is just like walking upstairs for the whole time. Oh, mm. are you trying to say your hikes are so much more hardcore? Yeah, I yeah. wasn't trying Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Wow. Step it up. Hey, cool. Jotham, how do you have you done, one, have you done, have you done one of these hikes recently? <laughs> I mean, no. Okay. But Oof. I was just doing a weekly Ooh. update kind of thing. I like this. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Man, it's it's a pretty bold of uh, Corin to sit there in his fucking professor cardigan and tell everybody how his hikes are so fucking um, H I I T. The last time, the last time I had hiked was in California last year, and it was ten miles, and I was wearing Doc Martens, and it was all like scrambling up rocks, like serious elevation, and it that sucked. You must have just come from the pickleball court, still wearing your your steel toes. (laughs) I looked really cool, though. <laughs> yeah. Socks pulled up high. Short shorts. Ed- edgy. Yeah. Okay, so, sorry. Derailed. No, that's good. No, you're great. We found out all about how uh, how Corin thinks that no one who ever <laughs> hikes in Florida will even will even touch the, the lowliest hiker in the Pacific Northwest. No, that's not true. I would never hike in Florida because it would it would kill me from, you know, suffocation in the in the hot, hot air. Yeah, or an alligator would get you. Uh, I love alligators. Yeah, that doesn't mean they won't get you. What the fuck? That 
I know. We saw, I know. A, we saw a rattlesnake. Oh, I, I know. It's cool, away. man. You, you can't bite me. I love you. Did you ever see Grizzly Man? He loved those bears. He loved those bears. He grabbed their he grabbed their poop and was like, "Ooh, it was inside them. I love it." Sorry, but Did I mean, really? it didn't stop. Everyone loves it. It didn't stop those bears <laughs> from destroying him as a is thing. That, is that true? The poop thing? Yeah, it was in the movie. Yeah, Grizzly oh. Man, the Warner Did Herzog he movie. It? No, he didn't eat it, but he touched it and he talked he about how it. he could feel their body's <laughs> warmth in it. He was a real, like, uh, it was a real special thing for him, and it made me feel very far apart from him. Is that where Werner Herzog listens to the tape of him dying and, like, next to his wife and tells her, oh, no, you should never hear this? It was just, it was a, a lady who knew him. Uh, okay. But yeah, he's like, you must never listen. He was to, married to the bears. To he this. didn't have a wife. Yeah, he was married to four bears. <laughs> I thought she died with him or his girlfriend or like they, they died like she was there. Yeah, they died together. Yeah. He and his girlfriend. Yep. Oh. So bear tax. Yeah. Don't mess with bears. Uh, yeah. oh, 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 you know how I was talking about what you tubing last week? One of the things I was tubing was, uh, you know, a, um, a breach from a river into the Indian Ocean that was filmed in South Africa. And the guy who was watching it, like when it turned into a raging torrent, he said, uh, don't, mix with, don't mess with nature. It'll sort you out. So <laughs> think about Words that next time you by. see a, bur a, a bird or a bear. <laughs> Either one. So, uh, Jared, is that uh, what else did you do this weekend? Uh, and uh, I made a personal best on my 5K time, uh, clocking in at 36 minutes for the first time ever. So... Getting under what? About that, huh? Under what? Thirty six minutes. Yeah, five k. Three thirty five minutes fifty five seconds. Outstanding. So, new milestone. That's it. I can congratulate you, though. Huh? It was a. You were talking about five k, right? Mm hmm. Oh, but you said milestone. It's a kilometer stone. <laughs> Thank cool, you. Cool man. I'm glad kilometer all these. Water. I'm glad all these awesome <laughs> jokes happen. Yeah. So, my 5K time is still, I guess, technically at infinity. Um, so I need <laughs> I need to bring it down by actually uh, performing one. I'm not going to uh, com compete in one. I'll perform one just like for cameras. <laughs> Running sucks. Just play pickleball. Yeah, that does suck. Now I'm I have get to start slowly escalating my distance, like every week, to get up to 13 and a half point one. Okay. When do you, do you do that by summer? Yeah, June. At what point are you going to switch from K to miles? Are you going to be like, all right, 5K, 10K, 12K, 10M, 12M, 13.1M? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Corin, what have you been up to? Oh, not a whole lot. Uh, the uh, I think the biggest thing that happened to me was that I... I made a, a a large purchase oh, of yeah. of a new TV. Tele, a new TV. Yay! All right. Yay! Uh, Did you go with that? after Ooh. after much um, research and debate and Is your neck okay? No. I'm looking up. Yeah, 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 I got it. <laughs> to those uh, people who wonder what Jared was just talking about, it was uh, uh, an incident in the past where whilst uh, shopping for TVs at a Best Buy, he injured his neck by looking up <laughs> I know. at the we wall. We discussed it in another episode. I was calling back to it. <laughs> yeah, I know, no, but, but not everybody watches every episode. <laughs> Nobody listens to every episode. People just uh, And if you do, in. please let us know. I'd love to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> If they do, you've already met them. <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, I, I have been, there's, there was no reason for me to buy a new TV except that it, you the, want it. The, the seed was planted in my head some time ago and it just sat there and grew and grew until I could think about nothing else and, and finally decided to buy one. I'm excited. I, I have a question. Sure. What was the first thing you watched when you that, set the new oh, TV up? That is a that's a good question. I the first thing I did was actually play a video game, and I played Destiny Two to see the the quality, the difference between the two. My my previous TV and the current one, in my gaming stats. 
What size was the old one? What size is the new one? Last one was 43. This is 55. Oh my God. Big diff. And did you get 120 hertz or 60 hertz? 120. Oh my God. Are you seeing that refresh rate on uh, Destiny? <laughs> uh, I don't think Destiny's pushing the 120 on my PS4. Did you I'm have um, to upgrade to the PS5? Did you run some uh, run some diagnostic programs uh, on your PC? See what you you can push it to. Uh, Jared sent me all the correct information on how to dial in my TV to the proper uh, uh, all all the proper settings. That sounds like something Jared would do. Yeah. He so just... Jared, classic Jared. <laughs> That's what Jared's and for. Power cycle. <laughs> Don't forget. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was honestly probably two. I don't know. Jared's been here for the whole ride. I think like two months of me like debating Hand whether or ringing. not to. <laughs> yeah, whether or not to buy a TV. Which TV is it? This one is it? That one? Mm -hmm. Which me things matter? Suggestions. Him arguing with me about it. <laughs> It's not going to yeah. be this way, Jared. It's not going to be that way. <laughs> like about about what finer points I'm trying to imagine. Like, you got to get a Samsung. Like, I'm a Zenith I'm man. I'm a Samsung. Zenith man. I don't know where you're going to buy a Zenith nowadays. A Zenith. Has that That's become good. like TCL? Yeah. Curtis Mathis. Remember those? There you go. VLC. That was a phone. <laughs> Okay. When I got um, uh, I got a new TV like in the last year, and when I got it, I started uh, just looking up. The, I, I looked for anything in 4K on like Amazon Prime stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we watched like some uh, like 47 meters down, uncaged, like you know the third in like some shark movie sequel series. And I would look up things on YouTube, just like 4K. Fucking hot air balloon rally. <laughs> so just like, let's 4K, just see some 10, colors. FPS. Yeah, exactly. 10,000 FPS, a record uh, spinning itself broken, glass shattering, 10,000 <laughs> FPS, 60 frames per second. <laughs> balloon filled with oatmeal popping at 10,000 FPS. Yeah. That's what? sick. Very sick. <laughs> a, a lot of very sick vids. <laughs> so are, are you enjoying it? Uh, are you spending... Uh, all your waking hours thinking of new things to watch on your great big TV. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the 4K Blu-ray player. 4K Blu-ray. It's worth it. Oh, I didn't know about that. Why do I got to get that? Jared now? advised well, you get a me PS5, to get. It'll be one. Yeah, so. Jared. Once you start, once you start down this road, it doesn't stop. There's always going to be more stuff to buy. Man. Lots Four. of the the like uh, Amazon originals now are are being produced at that uh, yeah. 4K. Nice, and right? But it's streaming though so it'll it'll never truly be like you know yeah that experience is not consistent we've talked about your internet it sucks. I mean, corin do you want a consistent it doesn't matter experience how bad, it doesn't matter how good your internet is or do you just want to be never... a dickhead <laughs> so, i mean just tell us i mean it's better than right it's better than nothing but i mean like if you really want to get the full like see he waited he waited <laughs> until after i bought this tv oh you, you're, this, you're good you're good he wants you're to add accessories though he said the tv's good he just says you're gonna now, get the ps5 that'll be it'll it's it is one you'll be all right i'll be all, all right. right i'll send you a couple i got like 20 4k blu-rays i'll send you some they're great uh, all right okay what's your most watched blu-ray i feel like terry gross tonight <laughs> Probably John Wick three. That'd be a good one. Yeah. Good call. It would be. <laughs> it is. Or uh, and Thor Ragnarok. Mm, okay. Oh, he's pretty good. Oh, you want to know mine? Pacific yeah. Rim. Yeah. I imagine. GF. Uh, it's up there, but Pacific Rim is probably the one that I've, oh, oh, I've I, watched I the most. I I don't really watch a Blu-ray. You will. Uh, you will right. be. You will be. <laughs> sure, sure, man. Hugh will be. Hi, my name's Hugh will Hugh be. Will be. Right. <laughs> so, anything That's... else besides your uh, major appliance purchase? I don't think so. No, just been continuing to looking for housing in Portland for the move for the beginning of the year. Um, uh, getting rid of stuff. Getting like that's fun. Starting to like that's the. 
the thing behind me right now it's my old tv stand that i'm gonna get rid of um it's very heavy it's solid wood if anybody on the podcast lives in or you know if anybody listening to the podcast lives in seattle needs a tv stand come and get it i guess okay cool well that's taken care <laughs> you of list your address you're, too? Not, you're not gonna have to worry about that again <laughs> So uh, any any other stuff you need to take care of on the podcast, you know, no sweat. I, I feel like that's going to imp- improve your move immeasurably. <laughs> that's it for now. I'll check back in. <sighs> um, is is that is that all your um your week for the most part? That's it. Yeah, we're okay. recording on Wednesday. Well, okay. it's only one day ahead of. I feel like it, it's been a short week for some reason. Yeah. Um, it not has. a lot. It has been a short week, but it feels, yeah, much even shorter than six days. Yeah. We're getting ready for Thanksgiving tomorrow. So I am actually going to play Dungeons and Dragons all day with my other group. Oh, is this the one, Um, the all lawyer group that does like weird lawyer stuff? Spreadsheets. (laughs) Yeah. Spreadsheet (laughs) Dungeons and Dragons. The uh, capitalism simulator. (laughs) 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 It's all contracts and... um, uh different interests and different uh types of manufacturing and things it's like star wars episode one yeah trade federations do you have 401ks it's like eve online we no, but we do have um an estate set up for the company that we've started that is the, the our adventuring company you know so like if anything happens to us during the adventures like it goes into this trust and the trust assets can be distributed according to our plans. Cool. Oh, man. <laughs> man, fucking ass. I just thought of everything. Yeah. There's a federalist court system in the land too. So <laughs> if you want to like probate somebody, if you want to get the assets from somebody who's died, you have to like go to the probate court, have them declared dead. You can grease the wheels a little bit. Probate the assets. Gotcha. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> um, well, I went to the aquarium. <laughs> I haven't been since yeah. it first opened. I mean, like... Many, long many long, long years ago. Cool. Which, it, like, it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. Um, so many jellyfish. Touched some jellyfish. Touched some stingrays. Well, yeah. Um, saw some otters doing flips. I've got a list of things here. Otters doing flips. <laughs> that was great. That's good. My partner in all things, Mandy, was wearing a blue shirt. And one of the people who work there said, hey, when you wear a blue shirt, animals tend to get more excited around you because the people who work here wear blue shirts and they think they're about to get fed when someone with oh. a blue shirt walks up. I don't know how true that is, but we definitely saw a lot of animal activity. This otter was flipping out. <laughs> Pro tip for uh, aquarium goers: get the full experience. Yeah, write that in your trade Freebie. federation. Yeah, trick trick the animals into thinking they're going to get fed, <laughs> and then bummed out when they're not. Yeah, that's also a good uh, a good thing to do with squirrels. Just uh, feed them all the time, and then just show up and play with them one time without any of it, <laughs> and they'll just love you so much. No, they'll probably uh, eat your ears off. Um, we saw. There were some good gators there. Love a good gator. Not big ones, but just ones that, you know, like hanging in space, you know, where the water level is like equal with your head and like they're just kind of like hanging there with their feet almost on the, on the floor. One eyebrow up. <laughs> yeah, the gators with their eyebrows up. It's Real very unnerving. Boys. Very unnerving to make direct eye contact with a gator like that, like right when they're like on your eye level. They're so, I, I like gators a lot. They're very. Uh, yeah terrifying. i do too i told you yeah i love them. corn doesn't get them the way i do yeah i don't think so either tons of seahorses <laughs> who doesn't love seahorses the smaller the better as you go along the seahorse tanks it's like they get smaller and smaller and finally they're just like the size of like cheerios like son of a bitch they're great <laughs> nothing eats them would you think that small in there nothing eats them well they have their own tank oh okay. you think it's just, just a like free-for-all it's, it's not, not just like a one spot. giant tank <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jesus. This guy's never been. I well, they, go, they, they have a one giant tank, though, don't they? There's, there are definitely a few giant tanks, tanks, like with the shark, and there's a bunch of turtles in there and such, mm. and the fish that look like holographic. A lot of holographic fish. Uh, I feel like the, the little sea, sea uh, horses are kind of like the jelly... Are they like the jellyfish, where they have their own little like 
cylindrical things towards the end by the uh, the stingrays. Uh, yes, lots of good jellyfish, lots of good um, seahorses in their own Obviously. cylindrical things. Although I do want to visit Jared's aquarium someday, where it's uh, <laughs> every fish for itself. <laughs> There's also a wave pool. Five thousand fish <laughs> enter, four fish leave. <laughs> See the exhibit about the world fish. <laughs> all my evidence. <laughs> Trust me, the world fish crossed my mind many a time when I was at sure. the aquarium. There's no, no evidence of the world fish presented by the yeah. aquarium. Of course, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They're too scared. Big fish. I mean, yeah. Mass panic. They're like, they can't they're, let um, out of the bag. They're controlled like, by big fish. Yeah, you get ushered into another room as soon as you mention it. Which has a double yeah. meaning. <laughs> they're controlled by big fish. <laughs> All right, and there's Joe, them just sitting still. Yeah, uh, the, the little flippers, like pushing buttons and flipping switches. And there's a um, there's a place, uh, not the not the um, stingray tank and not the jellyfish tank where you can pet them, but there's um, uh, a place where you can touch uh, invertebrates and uh, anemones and such, and they call it the no bone zone. Um, which I like, you can't just yeah, say good. that good. and just be like, oh, we, you know, because they don't have any bones. Like, it's like they're doing like a Pee Wee's Playhouse, like a little something for the grown ups. Like, welcome yeah, to yeah. the no bones. That got passed out in a boardroom somewhere. Yeah. You know, they voted on that. They're going to love yeah. that. The big fish loves that. <laughs> it's just the big fish boardroom. It's just big fish, not the big fish. Also, there were attendants. At each of these stations all over the place, you know, uh, running the no bone zone, running the um, jellyfish uh, touch tank, running the stingray beach or whatever. All of these were clones of the same young woman. Like there was the same person at every one of these places. And that's next time you go to the aquarium, I want you to check out how many different people you see and whether they could possibly be clones of one another. One another because are, are, you, are you saying Big Fish has a cloning operation at the aquarium as well? <laughs> I'm not Fish saying they a, don't. I'm just saying has a it seemed operation. like every time we went somewhere, the same person was there. And I don't know if they do that. Are you being maybe followed? They red, maybe they have red vents, you know? You get, like, oh, you're talking about Among Us. From there. What do you say? <laughs> like Westworld vibe? Or yeah, like, or like Camino yeah, in or the uh, flies Attack on of the eyes. Seesaw motor functions. <laughs> I thought you said seesaw <laughs> motor functions. That's what I heard. Seesaw <laughs> motor functions. Okay, this is easy enough. <laughs> Step them down, I guess. What a chill day at Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> seesaw motor functions. Um, and here's something that's funny. Um, uh, I'll tell you that so you can you can know that uh, it's funny. Um, they didn't have that. There was an area that was like a photographic exhibit. There's you know big uh, printed photographs, and one of them was of a cuttlefish. And I took a picture because I was like, "Oh, Corin loves cuttlefish. I'll send him this picture." I was like, "I'm taking a picture of a photograph of a cuttlefish. Like, why don't I just tell him to Google a cuttlefish and think about it?" As like, hey. I'm at the aquarium, Google a cuttlefish, and let's think about each other. <laughs> so I never sent that to you, Corn, but I've got it in my phone. I'll send it to you after the, um, after the podcast. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you for you sending it to the group, me. group text? I want to see it. Yeah, absolutely. I, made, Still... I, I took one picture, and then I was like, oh, I need to back up so you can see the little, like, uh, descriptor that talks about, oh, like, the materials yeah, yeah. of the art. Still uh, one of the most interesting documentaries I've ever seen on anything ever was that Nova cuttlefish special that we all watched over and over again and showed yeah. to every unsuspecting person that walked into it's my nuts. house. <laughs> yeah. Cuttlefish are little aliens. They do weird little alien like, light shows and dances. And then when they're, when they want to kill something, like something shoots out of their mouth, like 10 times the length of their body and just pulls it into their mouth. And it's uh, gone from this. And earth. it like hypnotizes them with flashing colors. Like before it strikes, it's fucked mm -hmm. up. I'll change its shapes and shit. And its brain is the floats. shape of a donut. <laughs> Hovers. It's not from here. Jared <laughs> summed it up perfectly. Um, the other thing that's uh, that I've been very interested in this week is um, a particular Twitter account uh, called Kids Write Jokes. Yeah. And... I think it's based on an old Tumblr account that I may or may not These have These aren't like right-wing jokes by kids. 
kids uh, kids alt right <laughs> jokes. <laughs> um, so these are all jokes that were written by children for one purpose or another, but these are all um, uh, allegedly genuine. And it, I mean, there are just thousands and thousands of them. So, like, I'm going to tell you some some jokes written by children that are on kids write jokes at kids write jokes. Um, how does lions run faster? <laughs> Metal legs. <laughs> um, what did so the, true. What did the house say to the other house? You're fat. You don't have enough concrete. Oh. <laughs> um, wow. All right. Here's a joke. This one isn't a call and response. It's just kind of like, it's just like a one liner. Robbers will come to your house and ask you, where's all your toilet paper? This is during quarantine. <laughs> yeah, topical. All right. Hey, Jotham, I don't know if these need the rim shot on every one. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> like, oh, a little bit Jotham, of, uh, you punch him up. A little bit of action yeah. in quarantine. <laughs> cool. Hey, tell these kids to call me. <laughs> um, what is orange and is like a parrot? An orange parrot. A different Popsicle. orange bird. Oh, okay. <laughs> and lastly, uh, why did the bee fly upside down? Because it did a poo on the cloud. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> but That's these, the best one. You know, there are, uh, like I said, thousands of these, lots of fun. Uh, here's one more. Ask, okay. me if I, uh, ask me if I'm a rock. Are you a rock? No. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that one a lot too. I liked that one a lot. <laughs> um, well, I have a, um, I have a trivia a quiz challenge uh, today. Would you guys uh, be interested in taking part in that? Hell yeah. Okay, well then let's just see if we can. Oh boy. It's time for every human's favorite question and answer fun game. I already knew that a long time ago. With your host, Alistair St. Hill. That's right. It's time for a series of questions and answers and points with me, Alistair St. Hill. This week is not going to be another audio quiz. We did those for a couple weeks in a row. I know Jared, for one, even though he completely destroyed it in one of them, <laughs> constantly complained about the audio quality coming through the Zoom call. So I don't want a, to, him to have either. to uh, beat you guys uh, through that uh, strenuous um, uh, obstruction again so this one is just going to be me uh, speaking the questions and you guys answering it's uh, it's a portmanteau quiz again these are all movie titles i'm going to give you clues about two movie titles <laughs> that are joined by a common word or possibly even syllable uh, that make one long word together and we got uh 15 questions and we're about to get started you guys ready Mm. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> the movie number one. The movie for which Billy Bob Thornton filled his <laughs> shoes with glass <laughs> and the installment of Wesley Snipes' vampire fighting franchise that co starred Ryan Reynolds. Jared. Corin. Jared, go. <laughs> Sling Blade three. <laughs> 3 Yo! Oh, so on. very close, but no cigar. Corin. Corin, go. Sling Blade 2. No. It's gotta be 3. Yes. <laughs> the movie Sling he's Blade, in. The Return. I can't believe the things you say! Three swings, three misses. The correct wow. answer is Sling Blade Trinity. Oh. Oh. Sling Balsack. Blade Trinity. Just picture it in your mind. <laughs> Question two. I was just playing for keeps. Alfonso Cuaron's dystopian story of an infertile human race and a garbage man comedy starring Emilio Estevez and Corin. Charlie Sheen. Corin, go. Children of Men at Work. That's correct. Children of Men at Work. That was also directed by uh, Mr. Estevez. 
Oh, I did not know that. Number three. The quintessential 1980s high school comedy and John Singleton's tragic college drama. Jared. Jared, go. Fast Times at Ridgemont Higher Learning. That's correct. Oh. Fast Times at Ridgemont Higher Learning. There's something with my audio, I think. It's not coming through. It's not coming through, right? Okay. Yeah. Mr. Movies over here. Question four. A film by Francis Ford Coppola, widely considered among the greatest of all time, and a wedding comedy starring Steve Martin. Jotham. Go. Jotham, go. The... Wait. The... the... Jared. The... The... <laughs> go. I can't get there. Oh, come on. Okay. The Jer Godfather wedding singer? Oh! <laughs> Jared, go. Godfather of the bride. That's Damn correct. It. The Godfather like... of the bride. I should have been able to answer that one because I almost <laughs> spit it out instead of saying my name immediately. I didn't follow the rules at all. <laughs> it's okay. You, well, you uh, in in so far as you did not answer correctly, bingo. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, that was at a, a time. Well, no, that was before. That was maybe when you were too young to really uh, be uh, super aware of movies that were out and before the time when you were so cool that you wouldn't have watched a movie like that. And you were I saw Father of the Bride. Learning to smoke cigarettes. He freaks out about hot dog buns. Well, all right. That proves it. He does. <laughs> all right. You think I didn't watch it? What about the <laughs> famous no hot questions. dog bun scene? Moving on. <laughs> Number five. Luke Skywalker gets his arm cut off and Marty McFly almost becomes his own Corrin. father. Jotham, who'd you hear first? Corin. I think I did too. Corin, go. Fuck, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All that pickleball animosity coming Jesus out. Jesus, Lord. Empire Strikes Back to the Future. That's correct. The Empire Strikes Back to the Future. <laughs> Question six. Uh, a post-Civil War film that takes place in Atlanta and a John Woo movie about the codes based on Navajo and other indigenous Jared. language used in World War II. Jared, go. <laughs> Gone with the Wind Talkers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah! Gone oh, with the that. Wind Talkers. Jared is leading three to Corrin's two. Jotham yet to get on the board. Talkers. N I'm about either. to quit movies. <laughs> oh, no. oh, wait, are you saying you're post Rage movie? I'm, I'm post movie. I'm only documentaries now. So if you guys want to do like a documentary type quiz next week, I'm all for it. Okay. Something a little. I'm looking for something I'm a little more intellectual. Gonna, can, yeah, something, something a little more cerebral. <laughs> something to stimulate the mind, not just popcorn trash. Yeah. Question seven. <clears throat> A Jimmy Stewart Christmas movie and a tiger in a lifeboat. Jared. Corin. Jared, go. It's a Wonderful Life of Pi. Yeah, yeah! I forgot the <laughs> title of the first movie for a second. It's a Wonderful Life of Pi. Question eight. A movie about British steel workers who become strippers and a famous sketch comedy group's satire about the life of Christ. Corin. Corin, go. Full Monty Python's The Life of Brian. Yeah, yeah! Nice. That's correct. The Full Monty Python's Life of Brian. Jesus Brings Corin Christ. up to three, only one behind Jared's four. Jotham, still playing Exists. the spoiler. <laughs> and possibly... <laughs> There's Dis still time. Disrupting this whole uh, competition. Number nine. F.F. Coppola's Vietnam War epic and a very bad movie about magicians who are thieves. Corin. Corin, go. 
Apocalypse, now you see me. Yeah. You can, yeah. yeah, that's correct. My God, Corin just tied it up. Four to four. Four to four we're talking about. That movie is really bad. It's extremely bad. They made a couple of them, though, right? Yeah. There's at least two. Oh, your boy, uh, your boy, the great white Ruffalo's in there. He is. I know. Yeah. Big Not time. A, you know, so everybody's got Fisher. a couple uh, stinkers on their resume. I don't buy Jesse Eisenberg as an arena Anything. magician. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy him. <laughs> Question 10. A love story about some sort of alien fish man. And a movie about there not being any land on Earth. Jared. Jared, go. The Shape of Water World. <laughs> That's correct. The Shape of Water World. Nice. He wasn't an alien. He was a fish Wait. guy. <laughs> he was a fish guy. Fish. I believe it's pronounced fish. <laughs> Question 11. <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's against it's going against everything sorry <laughs> this is a good one it's a good one it's not that funny <laughs> it no, obviously it's, is uh, yeah no but to, uh, maybe not to everybody okay <laughs> question 11 <laughs> An oil baron makes his who? Oh. <laughs> God damn it! Okay, an oil baron. There will be blood sport. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you. Oh wow! Yes, uh, an oil baron makes his fortune in California in the early 1900s, and Jean Claude Van Damme touches the heels of his palms to his eyes. All right, I'm good. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's better than a win. Play of the game, yeah. You got to make the sound, too. Ah! Does that, like... All right, question 12. Jotham on the board. Jared yes. up five. Corin four. For the fence. Jotham with one. Yeah, that was that A grand was slam. <laughs> question 12. The most recent in a series of Australian post-apocalyptic action movies and Patrick Swayze playing the best cooler in the game. Jared. Jared, go. Mad Max Fury Roadhouse. Yeah! Whoa. That was pretty good. I was like, Max something, Max something. Oh. Dalton. Jotham's got the Fury play. Of, Road. Jotham's got the play of the game, but Jared's consistency is what's going to put him in the Hall of Fame. And I did intend for those to rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Question 13. Swedish child vampire movie and a 1967 Sydney Poitier murder mystery set in Mississippi. Corin. Corin, go. Let the right one in the heat of the night. Yeah. That's correct. Jared started laughing when he should have been saying Jared. <laughs> he just likes the way you say Sidney Poitier. Yeah. Oh, Sidney Poitier? Poitier. You know who I would have invited? Sidney Poitier. Um, all right, question 14. A film whose latest remake stars Lady Gaga and a biopic of activist Ron Kovitz uh, starring Tom Cruise. Jared. Cool. Oh. Jared, go. A star is born on the 4th of July. That's correct. Yeah! All right. Two points separate Jared and Corin going into the last question. Oh. So Jared can only uh, expand his lead at this point. I but can take that, a knee. That doesn't mean that... <laughs> I don't want to see you giving up out there. Question 15. Final question. Disgraceful. Disgusting. Uh, Disgusting. Al Pacino plays a Cuban gangster, and John Travolta switches lives with Nicolas Cage. Jared, go with him. Jared, go. <laughs> Scarface off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Final tally. Jared. With eight points, Corn with five, and Jotham with one. Jared is this week's winner. Yeah, yeah. How you feel, Jared? Feel good. To know that I'll always be around. 
are you doing Tony, Tony, Tony lyrics? It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are going to, are we going to take a break and then uh, do news? Yes. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay, we'll take a break and we will be right back. to Grand National Championships. We've reached that part of the show where we like to do a little bit of... <laughs> News with Jared? Um, Chinese flower has evolved to be less visible to pickers. <laughs> So I'm just going to paraphrase the story. Uh, there's a, a flower uh, that grows on a mountainside in China that is used in traditional Chinese medicine. It blooms a bright yellow flower every five years. Uh, but I guess due to over harvesting, uh, the flower has now evolved to be brown. So it blends in with the rocks and is less noticeable. And they thought that maybe, you know, usually when this kind of thing happens, they attribute it to animals like herbivores, like uh, but there, are, it has no like nothing eats this thing, so it's a hundred percent due to people <laughs> picking it, like over picking it for years. Are you the, saying the that it, it was ugly. the most dangerous animal of all? Yes. <laughs> Turns out it's man. Turns out it's man. Do you know what they use it for in Chinese medicine? Uh, are you wondering if it's like something provocative? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Is it for you know? What's it for? You know. You know. Uh, that doesn't say. Traditional Chinese medicine. It's not um, traditional. It's just oh, a foundational okay. ingredient. Yeah. So. It's like ketchup. It, uh, or strangely it enough, a flour. It produces a single flower after its fifth year in every June. So huh. it takes five years to start producing, and then it's annually. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, so it, a, a flower decided to make itself ugly to save itself. Oh, man. That is a... That's beautiful. A sad metaphor. It's less beautiful. Less visible. Do you remember when less visible used to do mornings over here on a WQYK? <laughs> um, have you ever um, caused a plant to evolve? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I have. Like, <laughs> easy tiger. Think about it. Like, <laughs> like there's a plant t to whom you are a vengeful god. Right. You know? like, I think my fuck. basil's doing that right now. Really? It's cowering from you and stuff. Yeah, it's not looking so great. Oh. But that might be because I haven't been watering it. Or oh. it could just. It could be perfectly healthy, but it takes on an unhealthy appearance. Uh, to so dissuade you, you from uh, right. from eating it, and I guess throwing it away, <laughs> which maybe that doesn't help it. Let's look like trash. <laughs> That's what the the plant whispers to I guess itself because I guess, I would assume yeah. it's connected through the roots. Like the the one leaf whispers to the other. Leaf. Yeah, it's crazy. Just it's pretend you're everything. something that it would want to crush. Um. Well, that's very, um, yeah, awful. <laughs> uh, what's in your uh, news, Jotham? Utah helicopter crew discovers mysterious metal monolith deep in the desert. Did anybody see the pictures of this? Certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some real 2000, cool, right? 2001 figured out exactly space what it is. thing. Not that I know of, yeah. It has to just be I like be the picture of the, the, the one guy standing on the other guy's shoulders. Looking like at the top of it, like it's the top of a fridge they couldn't get to. So it's the height of, of two people? I didn't see that picture. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, hold on. Let's see. I thought it was like yeah. a person's height. I didn't realize how big it was. Oh, my goodness. That's a large so monolith. When should we expect the Herald of Galactus? 
Well, I was reading that mm. this thing has actually been here for a while and that mm. Redditors in a like Google Earth thread discovered it years ago. Um, really? And, and that it's just breaking into the news now because of someone like came upon it physically. So well, still, someone came uh, upon it physically. Uh, so <laughs> you're oh saying that these people online knew about it before it was popular. Mm. Yes. It was it was popular in a fringe community. But now it's just breaking mainstream. Do you think that means What's the subreddit? people who liked it before are not going to be into it now? Yeah, they're yes, over it. absolutely. It's going to be like the it. arcade fire. Corin, what subreddit did we'll you find the that old in? old gods get here, they'll change their tune. <laughs> <laughs> Jared keeps bringing up his prophecies. You're mad, Jared. You're a mad old man. I didn't. I didn't subreddit. I, I read a story where they were talking about the subreddit. So this subreddit that you're a part of, Corin, um, <laughs> yeah. what was the first the recorded yeah, the um, moderator of recorded view of it that was reported to you in your uh, in your capacity as an administrator <laughs> of this particular subreddit? Yeah, it's uh, it's called Google Goofs, um, and it's just you know fun stuff that people find on Google Maps. <laughs> You know, but, like goofs and but and, it's, and it's pranks goofs. and is it particular to Google Maps? Yeah, it's only Google Maps. You would but, think that Google Goofs would be like <laughs> cover a lot more ground. Yeah, it's not. It was um, named hasn't evolved past maps improperly. Ooh, maybe yeah. we should go picking at it to see if it changes. Yeah, <laughs> like give it a flower, shot. It's a pretty it. solid community, though. You know, we like our uh, <laughs> you know goofs and, and japes and uh, japes. <laughs> Uh, goofabouts, um... Yeah, yeah. Ragabouts, ratabouts. Can canapes. <laughs> <laughs> we love a delicious canapé. Tapas. <laughs> Poultry with the bone in. Any other questions? Um, well, I feel like okay, this is Jotham's about story. About Jotham's story? Yeah. yeah. So, um... Oh, I can't answer anything else. Do you, do you think it was artists? I mean, do you think it was aliens? I know what Jared thinks. He thinks it's some Cthulhu shit. <laughs> That's from a Lovecraft story? Uh, I wish it fall. were. But it ain't. It's probably so it's just some dude. So you don't, do you think there are uh, any special some power? Art installation. Power in this, uh, in this piece, uh, piece of art, this object, whatever it is. The power of the collective coming together to right. enjoy. <laughs> so, Corn, what's in your news? Engage with each other so that Florida man thaws Thanksgiving <laughs> turkey in backyard pool. Florida man posted a video oh, oh, showing God. off his family's most unusual pre-Thanksgiving tradition, thawing out the turkey in their backyard swimming pool. So, like a chlorinated pool? Correct. They're brining it. They're still... brining it. In the protective vacuum sealed plastic? Yes. Uh, Mark still, O'Donnell posted a Facebook gross. Live video showing his family dumping the 16 pound tur turkey into the swimming pool turkey. behind their <laughs> Clearwater home. Uh, O'Donnell says the turkey's packaging was closely examined for leaks before the thawing process to make sure that none of their chlorinated water seeped into the meat. He said the turkey will be removed after spending a day thawing in the pool. O'Donnell says his family has been thawing the Thanksgiving turkey in the pool for 18 years. It's got to be thawed wow. by now. <laughs> in the package is better than I thought. I, I just assumed it was out of the package. Yeah, in yeah, the I'm pool. totally for this. Yeah, Florida you know man. what? Okay, sure. I can t completely imagine doing this myself and saying, like, <laughs> it's hermetically sealed. I'd probably say that it's hermetic, the seal. So okay. there's no harm in doing it. No, no hermets can get into it. <laughs> Um, and it kind, but it is off-putting. Maybe in in a similar way. At one time on a holiday, my mother was having some kind of problem with the sink, or the sink was taken up with something. Perhaps maybe a turkey being thawed or something like that. And in uh, an urgent need for certain dishes to be cleaned, she took them took them to the bathroom <laughs> to clean them in the in the bathroom sink. And yeah. her mother left <laughs> because she was like, <laughs> she didn't come not right out and house. say it, but she was like, I got to go. Disgusted. Yeah. She's like, no, not, not, 
not on any Thanksgiving that I'm attending or whatever <laughs> holiday, whatever it was. And my mom was like, what the fuck? You know, like the, it's just the, the same water is going to clean it all. And like, I kind of, I'm kind of on my grandmother's side a little bit. I was like, that was weird, mom. Yeah. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, where the um, poop lives. You can't put dishes in there. <laughs> that's where the poop lives. That's not exactly how I looked at it. In the the bathroom sink. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody, all everyone in our family <laughs> shits in the sink in the bathroom sink. It's a holiday tradition. Yeah. Uh, we do it all together at the same time. <laughs> it's a corn. big bathroom. That was that was weird that you said that corn. That part that part was weird. Mad weird. Um. So. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I still, you know, I'm not on board with this. I guess I'm, I'm the grandmother in this group. I would leave. What, ab what, ab what about yeah, sun exposure? Wrong. We got, I mean, most all pools. What about sun exposure? <laughs> what about it? Uh, I'm not, well, I, I mean, know. okay, if you're, if you thought a piece of meat, like if you put, run it under some water to help kind of facilitate, like it's going to thaw a little quicker, you're in, you're indoors. The sun is not hitting it. Is the sun hitting the turkey for 18 hours? Because that's gross. It is. It's like cooking. It's outside. It. It's in the pool. They did. Did I, they really say 18 fantasy. hours? Or are you thinking about the 18 years that they've been doing it? Oh, maybe I mixed it up. How? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but he, he said a day before. A day. It will spend a day thawing yeah, I mean, in the pool. It, it must take a day. Unless he puts it in, um, you know, he's got a big area where, like, you know, where, like, the um, the chlorine goes, like, <laughs> I can't, ex I can't explain like an this intake? well. In every pool, there, yeah, like, you can pull this little plastic thing out and, oh, like, yeah, maybe, like, you put a hose in it but or something. But there's no way like, that thing would shove fit. Shove the turkey in there. There's no way that would fit. Thing. That so thing is no. the turkey in the pool, but, like, all day, ah. like, over a long period of time in the so sun. So, if you had a hot tub. All right, so Corin just sent yeah. us a link uh, to this what so we can see the that's size the, of the turkey. That's the story. Uh, if you wanted to see how they throw it in the pool, it's very unceremonious. He just kind of picks it up by, like, Uncle Jerry picks it up by the wrapper and tosses it in the pool. Oh, Jerry. Um, everybody's <laughs> yeah. wearing uh, Hawaiian shirts and, mm -hmm. like, cargo shorts, and it's very That's the Florida uniform. Water. We're yeah. all wearing that right now. It'll make you homesick. Uh, they say they inspect. I didn't see any inspection. Maybe they did that beforehand, but I don't know how you inspect a turkey to make sure it is. I would is, imagine like, I've got waterproof. A, uh, I'll tell you what. Okay, it's just like a uh, a car tire. You put it in a. Uh, tire, uh, yeah. You look for bubbles. You put it in a small container first. <laughs> put it in smaller water first before you put it in the big. Like water. a Rubbermaid. <laughs> Dip it in a Rubbermaid. Look for bubbles. You got bubbles. That's a leak, pal. Yeah. For some reason, I thought this video is gonna Are, have like a million, a million views. Three hundred twenty-three is where it's at. <laughs> you know what? Nice. Eventually, this story is gonna break to mainstream, and we're not gonna yeah. care about it anymore. That'll be two be years, like two, the, three our, years. Our Google be news. subreddit. Yeah. <laughs> I saw on Google on Google Maps. I saw these guys throwing a turkey in a pool, like in a still image, <laughs> just like, like mid mid air turkey flying. I apologize for punching the microphone there. He throws that turkey like I throw a a, a dog. It's a, actually a horse toy for Maddie's dog in her pool. It's like a big round thing. Yeah, I just throw it up way up in the air. Wait, what did I say? Like you, like you throw the dog in the pool. I don't throw the dog in the pool. Cruel. Some dogs like it. Just check it for leaks first. Well, he got some basil too. <laughs> he's got all kinds of herbs. Well, he's got some basil too. <laughs> oh, they came up with a new basil. <laughs> it's called basil too. <laughs> all right, so. That's going to do it for the news. Did you guys get your Spotify playlist updated for this week's playlist? Because I sure did. I did. Hells yeah. Well, Just let me barely. tell you what I'm going to throw on. I barely survived, sir. That was um, from uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. We're going to, um, we're going to have this week, um, starting off the playlist, uh, some This Heat song called Paper Hats, Crack Cloud who I believe was recommended by uh, Jim Chambers via text or by voicemail at some points uh, in the last couple few months. I'm going to hear a song called Bastard Basket. More Horse Lords, super into their uh, 2020 album, a, what's it called, Common Task. We're going to hear a song called Against Gravity. 
Some Drala with Unwound. Uh, some B-Boys with a song called Closer from an album called Doo, I believe. And some Lithics, a band called Lithics with Victim's Jacket. And um, I forget how, in what order these always go. Uh, next up, uh, Jotham. Jotham, what's on your playlist? All right, doing the similar thing. We're splitting it three and three. The first three are Dead Moon or Fred Cole and 2D related projects. So starts with the Lollipop Shop, which is actually it's listed as Dead Moon in Spotify, but it's really the Lollipop Shop, Fred Cole's band in the '60s with "You Must Be a Witch," and then 2D, his wife, uh, her solo, um, one of her solo albums, "Rather Be Your Lover." And then Dead Moon, Dead Moon Night, the first three. The second three are mid 90s Memphis rap songs. So, Three Six Mafia, and then Gangster Pat, and DJ Squeaky. So, they're actually all, both sets are chronological too. So, um, You Must Be a Witch was 1966, 2D was the mid 80s, and Dead Moon's early 90s. 3-6 Mafia is early 90s, Gangster Pat is 95, and DJ Squeaky was 1999. I have a possibly inaccurate piece of trivia about uh, Fred Cole and, uh, and Tootie. Hit me. I believe, and maybe you can fact check me on this, that um, at some point uh, they bought a console from you know for their recording studio and it was the same board on which wooly bully was recorded oh that's fun i don't even want to fact check it i want to believe that's let's true. pretend that's true so um next bully, up bully <laughs> like that's i said a fun one just you in know, the past I, couple of years I, I realized like oh my god google exists i can find out the words to wooly bully <laughs> blew my fucking mind it was amazing <laughs> Uh, Jared, uh, what's on you? Oh, by the by, the way, uh, it's they're just talking about a bull that has like extra hair on it. It's a woolly bull. It's a lot of the lyrics are just describing oh, so like a hairy a dude. high T bull. It's, it's like a high T. It's like a high T <laughs> bull. <laughs> um, uh, Jared, your playlist on Spotify. Ah, I decided to go with a theme uh, this week. So I chose all last songs on albums that I really enjoy. Mm, right. Last Ooh. songs. Uh, so we've got Last Chance for a Slow Dance by Fugazi from In on the Kill Taker. Gouge Away uh, by the Pixies from Doolittle. Rhinestone Cowboy uh, by Mad Villain from Mad Villainy. Street Spirit Fade Out by Radiohead from The Benz. Uh, Two Headed Boy Part Two by Neutral Milk Hotel from In the Airplane Over the Sea, and Race Car by Periphery from Periphery One. Periphery. Never hear about the uh, last track. Hear about track one, side one. Jotham. Jotham is one of the biggest track one, side one proponents I've ever met. So this. <laughs> it's there for a reason. It's strong. Yeah, I like it. Uh, my, I'll just throw this out there just because, but like one of my favorite last tracks is, uh, Lonely Lyle by Big Business, which is one of their best songs ever. And the last track on that album, just FYI. How about the tourist from OK Computer? That's a good yeah, one. I, 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 put the, I put the tourist, but then I subbed out for Street Spirit because I thought the tourist might be a little, you know. Oh, and Life in a Glass House, sad. Radiohead's really... You yeah. know, really kicks him out at the last. Yeah, we second. really like it. What, what am Radiohead I saying? Leaves. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your uh, what's your themes? The middlest songs on every album. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <Why? laughs> Such derision. <laughs> and it's like it's hard to tell who I was deriding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not really. <laughs> <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I guess it was the person who, <laughs> whose stupid idea it was. <laughs> I, I split mine up as well with just uh, three songs that I like and then uh, well I'll do those three first three songs I hate uh, one... <laughs> shut up Jotham <laughs> uh, Porno by IDK uh, which is a like a, a newer rap song that 
Man, I don't know what it is. Like the lyrics in this song aren't that great. Like he's not that great a lyricist, but the production and the way like the um the song is is built is is really good and I just sometimes I can't get it out of my head. Um Alistair's Frozen really funny. I like it. Uh <laughs> That's I was his, going... uh, away go what's that what's that called? Oh there. No, oh, never mind. Uh, uh Sweet Thing by Shuggy <laughs> Otis. It's a good uh, uh, soul song um, and reaching way back to Glacial Slurs by Centromatic. I just, they came back up in my Spotify queue and I, I had forgotten about Centromatic. Yeah, Centromatic uh, is, a, is a great band and I haven't, um, I, hadn't, I was looking for that one song, you know, we will the time. <laughs> that, flashes uh, and cables. Flashes and, flashes and cables. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. um. That's one of the all-time great songs. They have some uh, some amazing songs. That yeah, that whole album is really good. Um, and then the other three is Thanksgiving tomorrow. So I put in three indigenous groups or artists. Black Belt Eagle Scout is a uh, like a Pacific Northwest singer songwriter lady. Um, her song "Soft Stud" is really good. Uh, Tanya Tagak is a, a Canadian Inuk throat singer uh and her song caribou i included and then northern cree was smiling which is a a powwow song um the round dance song i think so a, a throat singer like a, in like the traditional sense like like two tones and like overtone interaction yeah that stuff is uh crazy and uh, a lot of it is improvised so and then in the yeah never mind we won't go off on a tangent there okay if you don't want to go if you don't want to go deep on throat singing fine <laughs> well do you guys have any other any other topics that we were going to um to discuss today or should we um should we start rolling it up roll it up <laughs> roll it that's what i sounded like by the way yeah so uh, what, what are your plans for thanksgiving just real quick oh i i bought a ham made by professionals yeah. no turkey <laughs> Gonna have got some ham. Sweet potatoes. Uh, got sweet potatoes from theirs. It's from Honey Baked Ham. Got sweet potatoes as well. Uh, making some mashed potatoes, smashing them myself with some skins on mm -hmm. in the skin zone, mm -hmm. the no bone zone. Toss some horseradish in there, a little bit of horseradish, a little bit of cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't planned for all of this. I haven't planned for all of this, but don't worry. Everything's going to turn out fine. I'll use wasabi mayo. <laughs> um, uh, gonna, Naoli. Uh, yeah, green bean casserole, uh, cornbread. We'll be all right. Uh, Corin, or I mean, fucking Jotham. Jotham, are you going to be all over Instagram with your meal? I need, I'm going, I need like, uh, I don't updates. I don't know. I don't know if I'm what I'm doing. Maddie's baking now, and we'll be baking tomorrow some tarts. Um, I think we're going to see your mom by the pool, maybe for some outside dinner. Don't really know what we're having. Mom by the pool, probably traditional stuff. Yeah, a little safe outside gathering, you know. Sweet. Um, and then Saturday, I'm going. I'm meeting my. We're doing Thanksgiving on Saturday. We're meeting up um, on the Florida Trail, I think, and with Lacucci, um, to do a bike ride and a picnic. No. You got any trash talking for that, Corin? Not bad. No, I like your parents. <laughs> Good people. They're all right. I'll save it for you next week. <laughs> What are you Jared? going to do, Jared? Oh, I'm just going to see my folks in Port Charlotte. To be the first time I visited in a very long time. Okay. And going to eat some food. They're going to have that Turkish delight. Send you home. Send you home with extra <laughs> no, the, platters. Uh, when I lived with Jared, he used to come home with entire <laughs> extra like aluminum like lasagna pans full of like a specific dish. They'd just be like, "Oh, Jared needs his own container of this." So they'd cook a whole like family portion of it for him to just yeah. take home of mac and cheese and chocolate delight chocolate delight since, but I was... now i know how to make both of those things myself oh and what was the name so what what was the name that was come up with that um... okay so i made i made the chocolate I, every time i make the chocolate delight it's a hit everywhere i bring people chat me up they want to know first off i want is. you to know this thing bring i make the is pickle amazing ball club. you need to you need to understand that it's amazing alistair can vouch did you hear jotham say bring it to the pickleball club Sure. 
Yeah. You I'll make smoke some fast? fish. <laughs> you bring the chocolate. Yeah. So I made it uh, for a barbecue over at our friend Helen Scala's house, and she came up with the perfect name for it, which I'm now adopting. And it is now from here here for here two, two with, four here two four the with, mayor i don't even know how to say that um uh hillbilly tiramisu oh hmm. good I'm i was sorry. really hoping you weren't going to involve the word crack in it that is so i have such an aversion oh, to like yeah, middle-aged yeah, like white that. ladies calling their dip crack something and it's like you know that's just rude you drug drug crack. Crack. Yeah, yeah. Drug. i mean get the fuck out of here yeah, you didn't earn that why Karen. do you in particular have this uh, this particular version you in particular or the particular well as, as someone who has smoked crack i mean that dip is nothing like it yeah. <laughs> It was a lot. It's, it's, it's pretty good dip, Karen, but it's not the same. <laughs> but come on, crack. <laughs> a little strong. Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, add some more cheese next time. <laughs> Chocolate delight with cheese. Well, <sighs> I think that's going to do it for us. I hope everyone has a, a great holiday. We'll be back in it. Well, actually, I hope everyone had a great holiday. This will be out on Saturday after mm. everyone's already eaten uh, turkey sandwiches. Yeah. Wait, J- wait, Corin, you didn't say dip. what you're doing. What are you? Wait, yeah, you, I did. Playing you did. Dragons. Oh, you're playing D. I said it earlier. Yeah. yeah. You didn't do it in the round robin style. Mm 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 mm. No, I headed it off so we wouldn't have to have this awkward conversation. <laughs> well, I hope you write up some really good contracts and such tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And you and Pig uh, had a great, uh, great day together. Yeah, it's going to be delightful. Hell yeah. All right. So um, for uh, Corin Atchison, Jotham Fady, and Jared McLeod, I'm Alice St. Hill. Everybody be well. Have a great day, week, month, life ahead of you. Or even your life. Or even your life. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. for the last few times and i thought i ordered the same pizza last night but i didn't i ordered ricotta as an extra topping instead of feta and it just made it too juicy it was just too (laughs) (laughs) okay for one thing that's insulting to corin also corin seems to be in like an ingmar bergman film (laughs) (laughs) nice lighting yeah sweater things have changed over here oh i didn't even notice that and now I have that? suffered 1,000 winters. <laughs> is, it, is that better or is that worse? Oh, it just brightened a little bit. Yeah. I mean, That's... the focus is going to be on your sweater uh, shirt th- uh, combo anyways. Let's get yeah. started. Is everyone running uh, sound? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did, did you, you hear me? Yeah, I'm yes. running in 4K. Okay. <laughs> 4K. Okay. It's not really a lot in sound, right? <laughs> I don't know. Not a ton. I don't know anything about it. So Alice is my sound guy. What do you think, bud? I think it sounds awesome. And of course, we're not listening to your recorder. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we'll get started. Here we go. Tweedle, tweedle. All sick. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you ain't gonna get away with that. Not it's not even gonna be on the finished product. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>